Uh, President Obama was seen pardoning turkeys, not his political cronies, the actual gobble gobble kind. I don't know how I feel about this holiday. Hope you guys, hope every time you take a bite, you, you, you think of a Native American. I'm being mean already. <laughs> we just got started and I'm already being mean. Let's just forget the holiday and, and talk about stuff, shall we? Let's talk about the news because <laughs> there's there's not really a lot going on this week. No, it's kind of a slow week, so we're going to have a, a very fast, slow show. How's that sound? Uh, everyone wants to know who the winner of the um, GTX 670 Corsair Mask keyboard, PSU, and the headset. And the winner was Gern B2. I'm going to guess that your name is Gern because I don't, I don't know what else it could be. Green B2. Why does everybody have such a hard to pronounce name? I was having trouble on Twitch the other day. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, he won the contest with us and uh, Linus Media Group. So congrats. And we announced this on Twitter, but in case you missed it, there it is. We've got another contest that I'm going to do right now. How about that? So it's the holidays, of course, and you're all going to be going over to your, you know, your friend's house, your grandparents' house, your uncle's house, your niece's house, whoever the hell you're going over to. And they're all going to have you know, all their products lined up. Here's my broken laptop. Hey, the printer has not been working. What's wrong with it? Oh, it's not, the USB is not plugged in. Well, what is that? What's a USB? Um, so you're going to have just a whole list of questions. And I want to hear the most horrifying family tech support stories. And what I'm going to do to make this a lot of fun is we're going to put a post in the forum. And I'm going to pick one person out of that. And I'm going to send them a K70 keyboard. Um, and again, I want to say one thing. It's not sponsored by Corsair. I just happen to have a bunch of these around because we're doing a mechanical uh, keyboard overview video that's coming very soon. But I'm going to hook one of you guys up with one of these because the audience is awesome. And I, I just kind of want to read some of these funny stories. And they better be real. I mean, if you make something up, you know, I'm going to know it. I'm going to see through your facade, your lies. Your lies will not get you a K70, but your genuine stories of ridiculous family stories, you know. Like your, you know, your grandfather who accidentally changed his wallpaper to a bikini team and doesn't want to show his, you know, your grandmother the laptop, so he's been hiding it. And then you came over and he's like, "Can you please just change it?" And you right-click and change it. That's what I want to hear. Stuff like that. Real stories. Must be real. <laughs> I think that sounds like a fun contest. I'm playing back old memories in my head to myself, and I've quietly gone insane and now <laughs> need to be committed. <laughs> You're gonna. I'm, so, I'm sorry for any like nightmares that I induce, but. Uh, it'll probably be nightmares from real life anyway. I mean, does anybody like hanging out with their family? Is that like is a it thing? like the time you found the iPhone in the fridge? Like, how did that even happen? <laughs> Somebody must have been drunk. <laughs> they said it makes the battery life longer. I was like, I need to recharge my phone. Let me just put it in the fridge. Because <laughs> that makes sense. Even when you're drunk, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes t t totally making sense. Let's talk about uh, Black Friday and all the shopping mayhem that's happening right now. Um, Sony is doing some interesting things, and actually eBay is doing some interesting things to change the way we shop. I don't go to malls, but I know some of you guys out there go to malls, and I, I'm going to be kind of curious. Take pictures while you're in the malls and share out on the forum. Uh, but apparently shops are no longer just going to be shops where you walk in and, and interact with tangible items. All that dead space when you go to a mall, like, you know, there's a shop, and then there's a wall. There's an empty wall. Well, they're going to start installing screens into those dead spaces. And when you walk by the screen, it's going to monitor what you're doing. It's going to be displaying advertisements for products. And some of the screens are even going to have a little kiosk where you can walk up and, you know, browse, learn about items, and order items. eBay is doing this right now, and they think that they're the pioneer of a new um, type of storefront. And um, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this. I mean, these are pretty sophisticated screens. Like, they, they can tell how many people walk by. So that's interesting information for them to harvest. Like, you know, 7,000 people walk by per hour. That doesn't sound like a mall. That sounds like a New York street. Um, or more than that, even. Uh, and then it's going it, to, it even knows how many people turn their head to look. You know, so if you turn your head to look, it's like, ah, oh, this guy was kind of interested. And he looked at that camera. So that camera is hot. And then it knows how many people stop to look and what they're looking at. So it's going to be just harvesting a lot of data and also marketing to you guys. It's just a new way that they can give you products. They, uh, they've they had the, the technology for a while to um, scan. When you're, when you're traveling and you've got remembered Wi-Fi networks on your mobile phone, um, it is possible to sort of passively look at the networks your mobile phone is, is joining and use that to actually fingerprint you. 
So I wouldn't be surprised if these interactive TVs can actually identify you, not by face recognition, but just by the devices that you're carrying. That would be sort of interesting because then they can start making personalized recommendations and it's like a used car salesman in the screen. You know, uh, that sort of thing was actually happening when I was in Miami. People would go to a ball game. It didn't actually identify people, but they were sending out just massive amounts of data to anyone who had an open Bluetooth connection. So you'd be sitting there at the ball game and all of a sudden it'd be like a thing would pop up on your phone and be like, look behind you, the hot dogs are half price. You know, <laughs> it was really invasive, but imagine if they were able to do that, like you just said, <clears throat> with the... Um, with the knowledge of who they were sending the information to so they could personalize it. Like, hey, we know you like coleslaw. We have coleslaw for the hot dogs. Why did I go for I must be hungry. I don't even know. I don't even, I don't even want a hot dog. I just want to eat something. Anyway. And then forever you'll be in the database is that guy that ordered coleslaw with the hot dogs. Hey, Amazing. that's Amazing. That's better than being in the database for some other things that we're going to talk about here in just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> some really disturbing things you can be in the database for. Um, the other thing that is going on with shopping is, is an app called Shopkick. And I'm sure there's going to be a million apps that come out that are very similar to this sort of thing. And what the way the, this app works is it tells you where to go, you know, based upon what you like. And it even rewards you for going into stores. So if you go into like five stores that the thing says, hey, you should go in here. I, you should go and look at this dress in this store. Then you get a free coffee. So it rewards you for going in. It's just a, a new way to market. I, I'm not going to say anything pro or con about it because I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't go to these type of places. So I would have absolutely no use for this sort of thing. I, don't, I do not buy anything in a mall. But I'm sure some people do go to malls. And I, I just don't know how it was going to work. I'm not sure how invasive it's going to be. So I'm not going to make an idiot out of myself and judge it one way or the other. Um, the last option is a thing called The Hunt, which allows other people to go online and use an app and recommend things to one another, like, hey, go here and check this out. If, you're, if your style is like this, you're going to like these leather patent shoes that are made out of 75 alligators that cost $2,000. I don't know. <laughs> I can't think of anything that I would love more than having shoes made out of alligators. <laughs> well, um, I'm trying to think as well. Um, what about shoes made out of tauntauns? <laughs> yes. Tauntaun <laughs> leather shoes. Man, that would be like the ultimate snobbery. These are Tauntaun leather shoes. What do you got? <laughs> mm. Yeah. A bunch of guys going to a bar, and they just check out each other's shoes. That's the way it was in Williamsburg when I was up in New York. My friend was always like, let's go to a bar in Williamsburg. I'm like, why? He's like, none of the guys bother me. They're too busy judging each other's shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so this app is for you guys. You guys can share your uh, you know superior taste with each other and then argue about it and what I, I don't even care anymore i just want to talk about sales because it's black friday and everyone's going to be going out and doing black friday and it's on topic so we have to talk about it i guess i don't even know <laughs> how about it's moving right along yeah do you guys even care about black friday anymore i'm like the point right now where i will pay an extra five dollars to buy it at a different day and not deal with all the nonsense that has to do with black friday hey but trampling videos are awesome <laughs> Uh, it's uh, I think there, it's like what is it? It's like BlackFridayDeathClock.com or something, and it has the uh, injuries and deaths tally for all the Black Fridays going back like a decade. I kind of wanted to go out, and I didn't want to go inside. I wanted to get in the front of one of the stores, like Walmart and stuff. And as soon as they open the doors, just run as hard as I can in the opposite direction and see how far I get. Just like Rrr! through a sea of people, it would be like the the most violent mosh pit ever. ever. Like just complete mayhem. I don't condone it, but the <laughs> videos that have, like, the guy that stands in line and then gets, like, the iPad or the iPhone or whatever and then smashes it in front of the people that are still waiting, I don't condone that, but those videos are really entertaining. Uh, a couple more funny articles, then we're going to get down to the, to the meat and potatoes. This is just the celery. <laughs> this, isn't even, this is the soil. The this soil. is, like, the, the leftovers from after having made brown gravy. <laughs> <laughs> some people love that stuff it's like the best part the chunks <laughs> it's not even it's just like it's like the burned and it's like burned on one side and half cooked on another it's just the skillet swill that's left <laughs> skillet swill i think you just made a name for an indie band <laughs> hi everybody we're skillet swill are you ready to rock and roll they're from <laughs> skids London. mcgee and the skillet swill <laughs> skids mcgee and the skillet swill <laughs> i think we need to quit everything we're doing and just do that from now on <laughs> Mm, yeah. We could freelance in band names for the RIAA. <laughs> I'm not sure how much they pay for that sort of thing, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure they keep most of the royalties. Uh, so, some <laughs> uh, some idiot marketing people from T-Mobile and AT&T 
started a flame war on Twitter, and it's pretty hilarious. I'm not going to get into it, but the flame war ended when the CEO of T-Mobile jumped in and was like, is, this, is the CEO of AT&T going to get into this? Don't think so. Come and join us. And the guy ended up joining T-Mobile. So I thought that was, it was just kind of a funny flame war. Um, but I'm not going to really get into it. It's stupid. I want to do a follow-up right, right fast on the uh, Scroogled nonsense. So Microsoft is using the, uh, the guys from Pawn Stars as part of their Scroogled campaign. There's a girl, like, in, they made a new commercial girl. She's got a Chromebook. She wants to sell it to buy a ticket to Hollywood or some crap. And she goes inside and they won't take it because they're like, I'm not touching that thing. I'm going to get Scroogled if I do. Don't you know that they, and, you know, they can educate the girl on how invasive the device is, the Chromebook. I think it's really interesting that Microsoft is spending so much money um, marketing against Google rather than innovating in their own way and then marketing their own products. I mean, a lot of their own product advertising that's been coming out recently, like their commercials and stuff, have been like people breakdancing. I don't, I don't care about people breakdancing. I know it's like cool to watch and it catches your eye. I, I care about what you guys are doing. What, what is your interesting technology? What's something that, that uh, you know someone can blog about? So I, I don't know. How do you feel about this? This Pawn Stars business here. It's just, it's a marketing ploy. The, just, uh, I don't even, I mean, All right, here's, it's here's just the, so sad. Here's the question. Do you think that this Scroogled marketing campaign is going to turn people off to Microsoft? Or do you think it's going to be, you know, a, a, a hit for them? Do you think people are going to be like, oh, this is really awesome. I'm only using Microsoft from now on. I think it's kind of funny. Um, I hope that it would be transformational in that people would say, hey, you know what, maybe we need to codify privacy protections in law and, you know, sort of prevent this, that, and the other from being captured. But it, the more this kind of thing happens, the more it seems like the privacy war has already been lost. And if you want to maintain privacy, you just have to make up your own stuff and have 50 different accounts and hope they can't put it all together. <laughs> well, they, I mean, if they want to, they probably can. But it gets to a point where it's like, well, this guy is really difficult. Just unless he does something heinous, we'll leave him alone. That's what I think. But I, I don't know. Who knows? You know, recently, um, IBM came out and said that they were, they were um, you know, one of the biggest cloud providers out there. And then we have some information here in the business out, out there, the business outsider. I almost say the business outsider, the business insider Australia that uh, shows that Amazon is completely dominating all of the other cloud services combined. Uh, disclosure, Jeff Bezos is an investor in Business Insider, so that's the, that's the disclosure on the bottom of the page. I don't know if that can actually affect those numbers, but it looks like Amazon uh, is destroying them all when it comes to the cloud services. That's interesting, and also, I mean, is that is that scary? If, if, if something happened to Amazon, how screwed would everything be? Well, yes. Okay, so Amazon goes down about once a year, and when it goes down, it usually takes half of the Internet with it at this point, which is bad. S3, Amazon S3, their storage engine, that's actually really good. That's got a much better reliability um, track record than EC2 and some of the other stuff. With EC2, you know, I always see this and it's really problematic because if you just know a little bit about what you're doing, you can stand up your own compute cluster that's like EC2. And most of these companies like Netflix and things like that are doing that. So they're not completely devoid of infrastructure. They have their own core infrastructure because if you do this yourself or you do this through you know any other provider, you can get it for half cost or less. But if you need to scale really fast, Amazon can do that. And that's the value that Amazon brings. The EC2 stuff is pretty terrible in my opinion for for being able to do it yourself. But you know, I can just hit a few buttons and convert some physical machines into an elastic resilient cluster of my own and that's just what I'm used to doing like I can phone up somebody in the data center and then you know within a week or a few hours I can have more machines but with Amazon you can hit a few buttons and have 10 more machines at your disposal that's really powerful but you're gonna pay a premium for that yeah we're using it for the S3 mostly for our media and that sort of thing and everything else is hosted on our own server so if, if they do go down, you may see some images on the website disappear, but not many. We're not hosting all of them there through that. Just a, a few of them are cached over there. And that well, also makes it quicker for the, you guys when you log on to the website and stuff. Yeah, and S3 is the most resilient service they have because it's super replicated. It's just that the computing units, like the virtual machines, just the computers, servers, whatever you want to call it, those are much more difficult to replicate in sort of a non-distributed way and have those survive and things like that with, with static assets those can be handled on a request by request basis but you can't really do that with a virtual machine and that's why ec2 is a little bit more flaky 
Let's um, start a quick conversation about this because I have pretty strong opinions and they don't really mean much in this day and age. But um, I want to start a I want to start a quick conversation about cell phone use when you go out in the world. There's a um, a restaurant in Israel, I believe it's in Israel, or maybe it's just an Israel Israeli uh, restaurant on Earth. But no, I think it's in Israel, and he's giving the um, customers, the patrons, 50% off if they turn their cell phones off. So no no Instagram pictures. Uh, you know, no um, chatting online while you're sitting there look, waiting for your food. He said he was getting sick of it because people were using their phones more than they were eating. And I mean, this looks like a, a really nice restaurant, you know, like like a lamb and all that kind of thing, glass of wine. Uh, you know, it's not like McDonald's or something. And uh, he said that he was getting also getting tired of reheating people's food because they were so busy jerking around on their phone, they, they would need their food, you know, reheated. So, guys, um, when you're out there, if you guys are hanging out with me, please put down your cell phones for just a minute. I mean, I, I don't know, is, is it a big deal or not? Am I just being over, over silly? Well, you know, I, no, not really. I like the game, the better game, better sort of life hack is, you know, you and your friends all go out and everybody puts their cell phone one on top of another uh -huh. in a pile. And whoever goes for the cell phone first has to pay for the meal. That's a much, and if everybody makes it through the end of the meal without touching their phone, then it's Dutch. That's a pretty good game. You know, I, maybe, I mean, I, I think it's totally cool if you're like, you, you know, you're doing a hard day's work and you're, you've got a couple people working and all that stuff and you just like, you run down to grab a quick bite, you sit there, you, you know, you use your phones, you're still like kind of in work mode while you're eating. But if it's a total, I mean, it should be a separate type of thing if you're like going out to socialize. That's, that's my opinion. And um, I, I got to do a thing, I was talking to Linus on uh, Twitter and um, he's purchasing one of these new devices that go on your wrist. And I was like, oh, God, oh, no. And his response, I don't want to put words into his mouth, was something like, man, it's, it's the way of the future. It's the way it's going to be. You're going to have to get used to it eventually. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. Like, everyone is just going to be so connected. But I'm wondering what that will do to our society. You guys can talk about it if you want to. Maybe I'm just a hippie. But I actually like, um, you know, just socializing face-to-face. -face. I think it's kind of cool. It's going to be... Uh something like google glass probably or eventually contact lenses and people are just going to sp <laughs> just going to completely space out for a second that's that's what's going to happen because it's already <laughs> what happens it's so it's uh it's like uh if you ever are on skype or like google hangouts and somebody's got like three or four hundred milliseconds uh latency and you're talking and then you're done talking and then they're just sort of staring at you and it's really quiet and then you start talking and they start talking because there was a delay that's gonna how it's that's how it is in real life that's exactly what's going to happen it's going to look like they're rebooting or something. They're just going to stand yeah. there and be like, are you, are you okay? Like, oh, sorry, I just had to reboot. That's what it's well, going to look like. I find that, like, when we're, doing, um, when we're doing maintenance and I'm waiting on servers to come back and monitoring, it's like, okay, I'm going to run out and, and have a quick bite to eat with the guys or whatever. And, uh, you know, they'll say something. And they'll say something at the same time, like an alert goes off and it's like, you know, update, compile, done, blah, blah, blah. And I've got to read the message, the status message real quick to make sure that everything <laughs> came back okay. And so... They say something, and then I'm processing the interruption first. And yeah. then about two seconds later, I process whatever they said. And so it's just like, wow, that's really, that's not off-putting at all. all right, so, like, well, I don't, you know, I don't mean it to be, but. So, so what you're saying is, like, the people around you are like USB devices, and you're constantly polling them, right? Yes. But, but your phone is a hardware interrupt. It's a PS2. <laughs> yeah exactly that's that that is sort of the situation that we're already in and that's only the people that multitask well the people that don't multitask well you just get a blank stare and a huh <laughs> they're or, running yeah, a that cellar sounds on. good and it's like that wasn't even a question i'm just you're just making noise now i mean i would get as much interaction if i had a coffee can with a gravel in it and i was just shaking it that's a <laughs> cellar on two gigs of ram that's what they got <laughs> uh-oh he's hit swap oh no <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and wait. I mean, we'll go get a cup of coffee, come back, and then it'll be like, just continue the conversation like it never even happened. <laughs> like, where'd you get that coffee? Like two seconds. Did you did you have a coffee a minute ago? Yeah, there, there totally. have been a few times where I was out with friends and that happened, but other friends carried on a conversation and without even realizing it, totally subconsciously, they had a conversation. There was like two or three minutes, and then that conversation died down, and there was <laughs> silence. And then whatever was still in my buffer, I just spoke, and it was like. Wow, that was like eight minutes ago. I was like, well, I don't want to interrupt you guys. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we haven't talked about the NSA just yet, and we're not going to talk about them just yet. 
Last week, I, I, someone in the comments was like, NSA, 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 NSA. What the hell did you guys talk about before the NSA? Find some new material. And then I looked at our show yet last week, and we didn't talk about the NSA all that much. So I, if you're someone who's new here and you want to see more NSA, <laughs> Let me Welcome know, because we'll just do a show on nothing but them. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> I mean, I had a good laugh, but then I started wondering, is like, did he watch the show, or is he just like someone who showed up from somewhere else? And where are these people coming from that don't watch the show, and they just show up and say something stupid and leave? Like, I've noticed a lot of that lately. You know, someone shows up, obviously doesn't watch the show, says something stupid, and gets the hell out of there. That makes well, me want to look at the comments on our website exclusively. A lot of the channels that we follow, they've actually disabled the comments. And, you know, honestly, the quality of our content uh, comments have gone down since the Google Plus switch. It's really disturbing. Oh, yeah, they've gone down a lot. TV in the States, I'm, not, I'm pr pretty sure the rest of the world, but TV is actually dying. It's dying like crazy. And there's an amazing article here on Business Insider that goes through. Uh, there's lots and lots of charts. If you're someone who likes charts showing, you know, where things are dropping and... and um, you know, fewer houses now have televisions in, in general. A lot of people are cutting the cord. Time Warner lost like 360,000 uh, subscribers in Q3. They were the biggest. Uh, the net loss was around 100 and something, which doesn't sound like a big deal. Uh, but more people are consuming content on, um, on their computer. And what's even more interesting is that a lot of people are consuming this content on a tablet. Like, not just a computer, but it's, it's you know, it's through the internet instead of through the standard, you know, cable television. People are watching stuff on a tablet like crazy, like tablets and smartphones and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm just going to skip through some of, some of these charts here. Um, yeah, mobile video is way, way up. It's, it's just going through the, through the sky. And I wanted to um, bring all this up for, for one major reason. Let me see if there's any other statistics I want to share here. Uh, the, the CEO of Time Warner, uh, he's, he's got cancer, unfortunately, and he's actually stepping down. But this was a planned thing. But he said that the rest of the industry is in denial. So, I mean, here's an old guy who's been in the industry for a long time. He's, he's had some tragic, unfortunate, uh, you know, circumstances. He's stepping down, and he actually gets it. He understands what's going on. He understands that the Internet uh, is going to usurp cable television eventually, and there's a lot of people that are holding on for it. A lot of people are cutting the cord, uh, not just for broad, or not, I mean, not, not just for the uh, television, but they're cutting the cord for Internet as well, and that's because in a lot of cities, there's free Wi-Fi all over the place. So I'm going to paint a picture, Wendell. What do, you, what do you think of a world where you've got Wi-Fi hotspots all over a city? So just about everywhere you go, I mean, it's ubiquitous. You can always be online. And then if you want to, just if you want to, if you're someone who's in business or needs extra connectivity at your place of residence for a decent price, you can get gigabit internet. What kind of world would that be? I don't think that we'll ever get there with wireless. I think that the more people are on free wireless the more unstable and flaky it's going to be i think there's going to have to be some channel that's not wireless that handles that. oh, oh no just... i was meaning that you know while you're out and about you have free wi-fi everywhere and if you and you can have free wi-fi at home but if you're a power user you can get a line to have gigabit or something yeah that would be ideal and you pay for cause... that but the free wi-fi is everywhere but you have to pay if you want like you know a, a hard line or something or, or if you want to use the existing copper or fiber infrastructure yeah, the physics of, of everybody on Wi-Fi would just, that would be problematic. But if everybody had a high-speed data connection, there wouldn't really be any necessarily broadcast mediums anymore. And for broadcast, actually, wireless probably is a good choice. Um, you could receive a wireless, a, a digital signal wirelessly. And in that case, broadcast probably is pretty good. Um, you know, compressed high-def broadcast in a lot of markets is actually higher quality than the compressed digital high def that runs over cable television, which is weird and disturbing that it works that way. But I'm sure that our viewers that have the Arrow service can confirm that. I wanted to bring all this up because this ties directly into a court verdict that came out, was it like yesterday? Or I guess by the time you guys see this, a couple days ago, right? Bell Mobility was accused of an 800% markup on Netflix in a CRTC in a CRTC complaint. Now, Wendell, I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. I mean, it, it actually, it hurts my head. It's almost confusing because it's, it's. Okay, this is people, awesome. We don't even think about it this way. Like in our modern society, there are there is so much data coming to your house if you have te television because all the television is digital, 
there's so much data. And then they're like, oh, you can only, we only have like 20 megabits per second for internet, that's all you got. And our brains don't even think about, well, how much data is being wasted on this stupid television that I don't even need? So this kind of ties into that, but first, Wendell, I'm gonna let you talk to him about um, what exactly happened here with the uh, Bell Mobility case. Okay, so it's rare that we have a situation where sort of the man behind the curtain can be seen because these 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 companies and their press releases and their dealings with the press and things like that they are duplicitous and everything that they say is full of half truths and so this bell situation this bell mobility situation is awesome because the court has sort of pierced the curtain and really completely fully understood the situation so the situation is that with bell mobility they have a mobile video television service where you can get your shows on the go now this is not a broadcast service this is like video on demand or pay-per-view or well maybe not necessarily depending on it could be pay-per-view depending on your market um, but it's not it's not broadcast it is a service rendered unto you when you go through the mobile app or whatever on your phone and it uses data it can't not use data because there is no other mechanism to get that information the video information to your phone <laughs> and so they were looking at it and they said well if you sign up for the service it's like five dollars a month or whatever and you can watch all these shows and if you were to watch the same amount of shows in terms of minutes on netflix it's going to cost you 800 percent more in data charges and so data for data the court is like well wait a minute if it's coming from inside your network you're only charging five dollars but if you're coming if it's coming from outside your network or netflix or a third party um, that you would be competing with then they're at a disadvantage it's 800 percent more and, and bell's like no we totally need to be able to do that this is exactly what what they're doing is exactly what verizon has been arguing before the supreme court that they should be allowed to do and in fact with traffic shaping you know comcast time warner uh, and other major ISPs are probably guilty of throttling and shaping Netflix and YouTube and other, you know, quote unquote high bandwidth things. But so this is in court a, a situation of the court saying, well, this is not fair or anti competitive and all these other things, and, and which is good, but there may not actually be anything in law to stop this. And that's what the court case with the FCC and Verizon is about, which is a different court case. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the problem here is the fact that these companies, they not, they're not only are they ISPs, but they also are content, uh, they also manage content. They have content, they own content, and they serve content. So there's a real conflict of interest here, and there literally is nothing. There, I mean, there's, there's just very little there's, regulation. There, there's no incentive for them to be honest about the situation in any way, shape, form, or fashion, because... If they're honest about the situation, it cripples how much they can abuse their monopoly to uh, interfere with um, with the consumer. And so it's like, look, you have to go through us and our services. It doesn't matter. You know, people on the internet can invent new business model and new services. You know, Netflix was a crazy new business model. They ought to be entitled to exploit their diligence in that sector. But instead, what you have is a situation with like Bell Mobility saying. Yeah, Netflix, that's a good model. We own the network. We're going to take over your business for our customers because you can't get to our customers and we can. And so that that is textbook definition of, uh, of uh, the abuse of the customer relationship that they already have. And they should not be allowed to do that under the law. Well, you know, the FEC told Verizon, hey, you guys cannot do this. And the, the Verizon was like, screw you. We're going to sue you know the government so the uh, Verizon right now is in the middle of a lawsuit with the government and it could have really really bad implications for net neutrality in general the way they see the internet is the same way like a publisher sees a newspaper the publisher should have control of everything that goes into the newspaper whether it's you know content written by one of their own editors or it's letter it's a letter from somebody else or whether it's an advertisement they feel like they should be able to have control over everything in their newspaper slash you know their their internet and that could be really bad for all small businesses on the internet that could be really bad for anybody who uh, you know enjoys freedom on the internet in general but if if they succeed there's nothing to stop all the other isps the major isps because th there's a lot of money in this comcast you know time warner and everybody else is just going to follow suit and create their own you know version of the internet that's more like television than the internet and that's a very scary thing so start calling your congress people or something i mean uh, w what the hell can we do about this other than just sit back and watch it 
An informed citizenry is really the best way to deal with this. Look at the situation, look at it objectively, pierce through the BS and understand it and decide for yourself, is this a fair situation? Is this something that we want to allow commercially? I mean, I'm, I, you know, I'm as much a yay capitalism as the next person, but this is clearly an abuse of the system. Yeah. Do we want to tie this in and talk about um, the other secret things like the doxis? <laughs> Maybe we should save that for... Well, well, I mean, if you do the back of the envelope calculation and you look at a digital, so it's like we got the analog channel spectrum. Well, if you've got to have a set top box to get your digital channels, then you're, you don't have an analog signal on the wire anymore. And the analog signal just has just crazy amounts of bandwidth. So if you do the back of the envelope and you look at like an RG6 cable, which is what carries the majority of the North American television system, if you just look at what that cable can carry and the DOCSIS specification, you're looking at like 7.2 gigabit for everything end to end. And 7.2 gigabit on the wire is absolutely insane. Especially when you consider that, you know, most, uh, you know, a fast cable connection in America is like 50 megabit. This is just, this is almost, I mean. One of their big arguments right now is that, okay, well, maybe, yeah, that, that sort of infrastructure is in place, but the last mile. They, they always throw out that thing, oh, the last mile, the last mile. But, but this is last it's, mile It's coming to your house. Like, all this information is coming to your house. So it's got us kind of scratching our heads lately. And I'm, we're not, I don't think we should get into too much more of that. Unless we, we'll probably get shot. <laughs> My, my set-top box is receiving like 200 channels digitally at once. That bandwidth could just as easily be internet or Netflix or anything. I mean, I'm, I don't have a television, so I'm not like a pro on this stuff. I mean, is, is it actually receiving all those at once, or is it every time you change the channel, does it actually receive a new signal? I, I don't know how that works. I literally have not had a television since I was 15 years old. Yeah, no, it's uh, they're broadcasting it, but they're broadcasting digitally. But there's still all of the channels digitally on the carrier, on the line, which is just crazy amounts of bandwidth. Now, the digital channels only use like one-tenth of the analog bandwidth. So, yeah. And we don't have analog channels anymore if you have to have a set-top box. And so, like, 90% of the wire can be used for other things, which is not being used the last mile, but is being used on the backhaul networks. So you're telling me that we could have much faster Internet, but they don't want to give it to us because it's not in their interest financially. Yeah, even if we don't want to upgrade to copper, which would be the best long-term plan, from a cable perspective, cable supports it. And DOCSIS 3.0 and 3.1 certainly support absolutely ridiculous speeds in the last mile but for some reason they don't want to give it to us yeah and they said, want to put data caps in and because netflix is the enemy and you know god forbid you get a 4k television <laughs> yeah, you you said upgrade to copper i think you meant to say upgrade to um fiber oh yeah yeah because I mean, everyone in the comments will go crazy and call you an idiot even though you just misspoke that's another thing I've noticed lately. Like one of us will miss misspeak or something. Like you say the Fourth Amendment when you mean the Second, but you but you intelligently know that you meant to say the other one. But someone will be like, "You guys are idiots!" Like it's called misspeaking. My favorite one is when I say something's in the Constitution, but I actually mean the Bill of Rights because yeah. I'm just a moron and that's just how it runs. <laughs> but but you logically know you just you just misspeak. So anyway, um, I'm gonna lighten up real quick, and I just want to. Um, point something out that's really funny right now in the uh, in the media every time a um one of the uh, tesla cars catches on fire and there's been like five or six of them right out of the all the cars that have sold that have caught on fire because the battery hits a rock or gets hit by a you know a stick or something like that it catches on fire the media goes absolutely insane there's videos about it all day long they repeat the stuff on the news and i just wanted to you know remind everyone the other cars do catch on fire too. For instance, the uh, 2013 Escape, the, it's an SUV from Ford. They're recalling the damn thing because it spontaneously combusts because there's a leak in the uh, fuel tank somewhere. And no one talks about that. You, have you turned on Fox News and been like, another uh, you know, 2013 Escape has spontaneously combusted? No, you don't see that. But, but they are having a recall for those right now. They're not recalling the Tesla. So I just wanted to you know, say that to everybody out there that there's not fair reporting going on when it comes to the Tesla. And I'm not sure why that is, but it seems a bit ridiculous. Moving on. That should have been an earlier article, but it was in the middle here, and it was kind of fun to mention. All right, are you ready to talk about the NSA? Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get ready for it. 
No, All right. it's just like it's like what are they up to this week? And then it's like, oh yes, this is fun. Oh, this, this is no, fun. this one's a lot of fun cause, because we can actually get into this for a minute because the latest uh, revelation from the Snowden leak and the Snowden documents and all that sort of thing is that the NSA has been spying on the porn browsing habits of several individuals, and they want to use that information to discredit them when they start to become radicalized. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, anything, anything to discredit your enemies. Sean Turner, he's the Director of Public Affairs for National Intelligence, and he says without discussing uh, specific individuals, it should not be surprising that the U.S. government uses all of the lawful, that should be italicized, but it's not, all of the lawful tools at our disposal to impede the efforts of valid terrorist targets who seek to harm the nation and radicalize others to violence. And what's interesting here is there are like five or six people in the report from Snowden um, that this, you know, that, that they seem to be targeting uh, for this. And a lot of them look like they're not really terrorists. And some of them may even be inside the U.S. And one of them is uh, described as a U.S. person. So, I mean, you know, the NSA saying like, oh, no, no, these are all like, uh, we, we, we believe most of these people are outside of the country. If you guys are the NSA, you should know if they're inside or outside of the country, number one. So your, your double talk is kind of ridiculous there. And number two, in your own reports, one of them is identified as a U.S. person. So why are you watching them? Are you trying to blackmail them? I've got an idea here that they could really bother some people and get them to do just about anything if they said, hey, we see that you're into midgets that use snakes as towels to whip each other in the butts. See, the, the problem I have with what you're saying is that it's like as if there are rules, but there are no rules. And uh, here, here's a really good example I'll give you. It's like, they're visiting a foreign website like they they're, they're the bbc.co.uk right they're, they're 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 on a foreign website well that's grounds to spy on them because why would they go to a foreign website that's crazy you know foreign website you know it's it's like somebody going to the border and then you know flying to london for the bbc we need to scrutinize that and the internet's global i mean it doesn't matter that you're on a foreign website most of the time it's like oh we need to monitor the terrorist cell websites and blah blah, blah. And it's like but this, this was this was the BBC. That doesn't even. You're not even being honest, guys. I mean, come on. Uh, where I guess that's how they they make this legal is by saying that it's a foreign type thing. I, I don't I don't understand how it's legal, and then I also don't understand how people's porn habits have anything to do with terrorism and why they're allowed to collect that data. Um, I mean, it says right here they're just doing it to discredit people. So that sounds like blackmail to me. I mean, I know they could release it, release it to discredit someone who's already out there, but it sounds like they could use it for blackmail and that sort of thing. The problem that I have with this is that it goes very much against the sort of idealistic America. It's like we can show the rest of the world that we're better than them by leading by example. And this would not seem to be leading by example. This would seem to be the same old tired BS that <laughs> everyone else is doing. You know, our our whole, like, we're better than you is a very cowboy type thing. It's like, I'm better than you, son. If you don't like it, you're going to get a missile up your butt. <laughs> well, it's like it's like I'm going to demonstrate how much better I am by leading by example. That is a good thing. That is something you can provide a role model that people can aspire to be. Yeah. But instead, we have people sifting through other people's porn, which just doesn't even make sense. I mean, <laughs> we're paying like a day job. That, that's taxpayer dollars going to do that. That's just, I mean, really, is that what is that what I mean? Is that really necessary in this day and age? So that's pretty much. Is that all the NSA? Yeah, that's pretty much all of the NSA for today. <laughs> yeah, just so you know, we wouldn't have pointed it out if it wasn't for you, asshole YouTube commenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that. I hope you don't sleep well. <laughs> the Bitcoin creator may have ties to the Silk Road founder, and this is kind of a stretch in my opinion, but... Uh, yeah, this article is complete BS. It's, it's a it total 100 stretch. 100 BS. Uh, he's saying, you know, in the, here's, the, here's the, the way they tied it together. Uh, because one of the first... Bitcoin accounts made a huge, uh, not not really a donation, but just transferred a huge amount of Bitcoins, 800 and something thousand dollars worth um, to the guy behind the Silk Road, uh, the Dread Pirate Roberts. So one See, of the first, one of Bitcoin the first, not the first, but one Bitcoin of the first. Bitcoin didn't have like value assigned to it. Like the first Bitcoin transaction that actually had dollars assigned to it was a guy in Florida getting a pizza. And it was some, it was like, in, with Bitcoin being at a thousand dollars, that pizza was like a three point seven million dollar pizza at this point. I think they want a reason to um, shut down, hate, regulate Bitcoin. They they need some reason to say that this is a bad thing. 
And this could be a very good region if they can figure out a way to tie the creator of Bitcoin and the creator of the Silk Road together. So I don't know. The dude made $580 million from Silk Road, Dread Pirate Roberts. They, they've recovered like $118 million worth, but the guy made a lot of money off of the I'll Silk be, Road. It'll be interesting to see how his court case plays out. Talk about hardware. The WD Black Squared. Are you going to get one of these? I would like to get one of these so that we can review them. It's a, it's an SSD plus an HDD, and it's really neat. Okay, so Samsung, Samsung, Seagate. Seagate. Okay, so Seagate did this a long time ago, but they only had like four or eight gigs of NAND, and they had a paper that said, you know, most people live in eight gigs, and eight gigs is fine. I, I don't really, I don't really necessarily uh, agree with that. I think this is a much better approach. Now, I've been messing around with... Um, you know, we have a couple of Haswell boards and uh, the mechanical drive caching, like the Intel 64 gigs of flash plus a mechanical hard drive, that actually, for gaming and stuff like that, that actually performs really well. I'm really impressed with that technology. It's sort of a second or third generation of that type of SSD caching, and I played with the SSD caching early on, and it really wasn't that great. But this, in one package, if it's really good, if it's really well executed, because in my opinion, the Seagate thing was not as well executed as it could have been. This could be amazing. Yeah, we should probably get one of these for a review. If anybody from Western Digital is watching, hello there. Guys in the comments, let us know if you'd like to see a review on one of these. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Tweet at Western Digital and say, hey, get us a review sample. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Um, the, <laughs> the Double by uh, Double Robotics, have you seen this thing? Yes. There, there are actually a couple of telepresence robots on Kickstarter, and I'm kind of surprised that this one is getting all the buzz and the press and stuff, but it would be nice. I could get one. I could see myself with one of these. You know, I, I'm going to be a hippie again. I'm always worried that people are going to use this as an excuse not to go anywhere. Like, I'll just send double. Well, you, you guys are going to be at the art gallery. Yeah, I'll send double. I'll drink wine at home. You know? <laughs> do you think it's actually going to be like that, or do you think it's going to be more of a thing like where, hey, I'm really sick today, and I've got a massive meeting. Okay, I've got double. I think that double is going to be used to go to meetings that nobody wanted to go to in the first place. <laughs> so you'll have like a whole boardroom full of doubles? Yep. But that That's way what they I could, see happening. That way people can sit at home and half participate? Yep, exactly. Because they were only going to half participate anyway. They were going to play on their phones or look at their smartwatch or whatever. Yeah, now they can go in their sweatpants instead of their fancy outfit and, and you know, half participate in comfort. <laughs> I can't tell you how many meetings I've been in that, that's taken like an hour of preparation and, or more and then you go in the meeting and there's only actually like 15 minutes of actual real things that are needed and the other like 45 minutes or an hour is just completely pointless the, you know the consensus on reddit was that this is one of the creepiest inventions ever and i think that the presentation is, is creepier than the actual invention the guys take this in in their like little video here on vimeo or whatever they take this thing way too seriously and they make it look like it, it becomes a surrogate living life for you and i don't think that's how people are going to use this if it is, then I think it is creepy, but I think this, I think it's just mainly the presentation that's creepy. But who knows? The Shimuzu Corporation, they want to put a ring of solar panels on the moon. They want a lunar ring all around the moon. Um, 13,000 terawatts of continuous energy. That's what they would be streaming back to the Earth. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, the streaming back to the Earth thing scares me because I experienced this in SimCity. This is one of the future technologies in SimCity. And sometimes they would get where they were pointing the beam wrong, and then I would spend like an hour cleaning up the damage. <laughs> it's going to be like the, the start of Call of Duty, you know, where they've got that <laughs> beam weapon in outer space that America developed for some reason. Yeah. I don't think that this kind of thing is going to be necessary because the um, power consumption of doing stuff with the dye shrinkage and the shrinkage of lithography and things like that and the cost of fabrication solar arrays has gone down so much and power consumption has also gone down that those two are going to cross and we're going to be able to produce all the energy we need from solar probably in the next hundred years yeah, this the moon could totally be like military or fuel or base or whatever though uh, it seems like you would lose a lot of power in the transfer and all that oh yeah no you completely would but it's basically free energy so it doesn't matter yeah uh, it's going to be useful that the moon is basically you know um, always in sunlight or whatever. Yeah, one side of it is, and if they put a ring around it, it's always going to be getting sunlight. Is it all? It's it's not always unless it's like an, there's there's like an eclipse or something, but it's pretty much always in sunlight. All right, um, let's talk about video games, and we have a few funny things to talk about. 
Have you seen the Xbox Live has been warning people and banning people for cursing? I really enjoy the... It's not just that. They're playing like a football game and they're yep. getting, or a basketball game yeah. or something, and they're getting technical fouls for swearing. So, yeah, you're sitting at home and you miss a shot and you curse. Technical foul. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I can't allow you to swear. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm all, I'm all for like getting rid of some of the idiots on Xbox Live, but I don't know if the, you know... Having the Xbox parent you is the solution. It's a hilarious. <laughs> this is the real world version of the Google Plus comments for conversion on YouTube. <laughs> here's um, on, on Reddit. Here, there's a um, here's one of the letters that someone got. <laughs> someone got from this. Your temper seems to be getting the better of you in recent matches. <laughs> if you read in that voice, it's it's like all it's so much better. Please be aware that you are an ambassador for this football club, and the language you have used puts us all in a bad light. Please try and refrain from such colorful from using such colorful language in the future and control your overly aggressive nature <laughs> i'm sorry dave i can't allow you to swear that's just that's all i got because it's just i'm glad i didn't buy an xbox god i'm glad i'm on pc i feel sorry for you guys out there buying an xboxes and that sort of thing i don't know this is all jesus's plan wasn't it wasteland <laughs> 2 on pc could be in beta like really soon in a couple of weeks, in fact. I did not know that they were that far along with Wasteland 2. I backed this game. Wasteland 2, in my opinion, is the spiritual successor to Fallout 2. And all you guys on console may be surprised to know that Fallout 3 was not the first Fallout game. And it was actually quite a different type of game. I really enjoyed the Bethesda games. But Fallout 3 was an Elder Scrolls type game. It was a Bethesda game. It was not an interplay Fallout game with a top-down perspective. It was had some of the flavor, but... And I, and I really liked it because I like Bethesda games. I thought it was a hell of a game. But this is going to be, like, in my opinion, like Fallout 3, if that makes sense to you. Wasteland 2. Wasteland came before Fallout, and then these guys, same team, making Wasteland 2. So I'm really looking forward to this. I will be playing the beta, and I will let you guys know how it is. I'll see if I'm allowed to stream it on Twitch, and if I can, I'll stream it on Twitch. That would be amazing. Yeah, I'm really, really it might looking be a lot forward of fun. to it. Oh, remember that game I was telling you about called The Mandate? Yes. I was saying that you, you're probably going to like that game because it's, it's different than a lot of the other space operas and space shooters that are coming out in the sense that it lets you interact uh, and develop emotional connection uh, with your crew. Sort of like, you know, Star Trek and all those type of shows did. It's been funded. With four days left to go, it, they've reached $530,000. It's been funded. Uh, I would suggest you guys go over there and take a look at it. There's some gameplay footage on there that I think looks quite impressive. Uh, a lot of the press that, that's looked at it is pretty excited, so I'm looking forward to this possibly more than Star Citizen. Maybe not, I don't know. Star Citizen. I have to admit it is coming together really well. Yeah. And yeah, I think you were worried at first about the, you know, wondering who, who was involved with the development. Yeah, because this is a really, really ambitious product, project. I mean, all the functionality that they're talking about and the little i mean the little details there's so much little minutia that they would need a huge really well-funded team to pull this off yeah well, so and, and is the video do, footage go, sorry, go ahead do we know if this is like gap funding like if they've got some vc investment but you know the the, the half million that they're looking for is just to to, to bridge the gap or well, yeah, yeah they'll probably need over a million because they're gonna have to have a, a, a big team and and you know something i see a lot of people i want to also I, I, lo I love helping to remove ignorance so, I mean, that's one of the things. If, if you guys see me say something ignorant, please help me remove my own ignorance. But a lot of people think that, uh, you know, games are easy to produce, and they're like, why, why do they need $500,000? Give them $300, and they should be able to sit in a basement and produce a game and eat ramen noodles. A game like this requires a team. It requires organization. It requires, um, you know, press. It requires an office location because, I mean, you can work... Uh, remotely and that will work but if you really want to get it done quickly it's easier if you're all under the same roof so there's a lot of bills that have to be paid we're talking like several you know several thousand dollars a month for rent and each person has to eat and live and if the team is 10 people each one of those people probably needs around 50 to 60 thousand dollars a year to live because they're probably in a city like san francisco where is this located uh, guess what san sacramento california which is also cheaper than San Francisco, but not an inexpensive city to live in. So they have to live. And if they're stressing out about how they're going to eat and pay their car bill, then they're not going to be able to make a good game. So they need a decent cushion here to make a game. 
and I don't, you know, realistically from a business sense, 500k is not enough. There is no way that they will be able to do this on 500k because, you know, their tentative launch window is Q1 of 2015. And 500k for people working a year, that's probably not enough to retain the talent and have, you know, the programmers and the project managers and the designers and the salary costs in that part of the country. And, you know, even if they farm it all out and they're not doing a lot of stuff internally, which would be bad because their internal development team needs to do it, that's probably not enough money. You know, I think there's one way they can do this. They don't need to reinvent the wheel. The wheel. They need to use a lot of pre-existing, uh, you know, stuff, pre-existing assets. Maybe they can even farm some stuff out to the community like they're doing with the new Richard, Richard uh, Garriott game. Uh, where they're, you know, people are making assets and, and incorporating them into the game. So he's got guys at home that know how to use 3D programs doing stuff. If they do stuff like that and use their money wisely, they may be able to pull this off. But if they're starting from scratch with a, you know, a, a brand new game engine, it'll be way more difficult. I, I don't know. I think they might be able to do it. But we'll see. It's getting a little easier these days. So that's pretty I'm much it. Go ahead. I'm a little skeptical. We'll just have, to, have to wait. It, looks, it does look promising. They've made a lot of progress. Oh, there's, there's a holiday sale going on in our t-shirt shop, and I didn't even know about it. I talked to, guy, to the guy on the phone yesterday. I had to call him up because I'm ordering 500 new shirts for the end of the year. We're getting the George Washington I Don't Party shirt in black, so that, that'll be there for you guys. And I've had several requests for uh, larger shirts. We've got someone who's six foot eight. I got you a shirt. It's like a 3 or 4 XL or whatever. Um, and then we've also got some. someone said they needed like a 5 or 6 XL. Um, so we're getting those shirts for you guys. Um, if you guys need a certain thing, email me, and I'll try to get it for you guys. Whenever I do my next order, I'll get a few special orders just for you. To, if, I, if I know you want it, that is. I didn't even know anybody wanted it before. So, yeah, we've got all that. We've got our coffee mugs that will be in before the end of the year, so you guys will be able to, uh, you know, drink your coffee with the awesome logo on the cups. They, they already made them, and they put the logo on one side, but they didn't put it on the other side. And I was like, what about the lefties? You know, we got to have the logo on both sides in case they're holding it with a different hand, man. And I sent them back. I'm one of these weirdos that, like, must use top quality T-shirts and must do it right. Or else it's not going in the store. So I'm kind of a stickler, but that ends up paying off for you guys. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've, not really, I've not really raised the price based upon the fact that we've raised the quality. I'm paying more for the T-shirts now, but, we're, but they're still 16 or 15 bucks. They probably should be 16 because we're... We're like pretty. I've never actually made any money on these. I just keep rebuying shirts with the money we make from the month before. So it works out though. And as long as everybody's hooked up, that's what that sh the store is really for. It's about hooking up everybody out there in the community. Um, Steam sale is here, so that's pretty cool. Other game deals on our website. Just go to techsyndicate.com/slash/game-deals or click on the screen and check out our game deals. This is the ending. A lot of people, you guys, are just closing it because you know I, I may say something ridiculous. I might stand up and be wearing funny boxers. You better watch. You better watch. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> never going to happen. Yeah, probably not going to happen, but you never know. You never know. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, we've got to have some new support mechanisms. When are they going live, you think? We, uh, we still we can, need the two names, and that's it. That's all we need, right? Yeah, I'll, I mean, the mechanism's there. You just need to name them. We could go live before tomorrow. Man, I can't think of a good name. It's like, it's it's making us lose money because I've not been able to think of a good name for the different ranks. We're redoing a lot of the comment system. We have a bunch of new support stuff going on on the website. So if you guys want to support us, you can. Um, I'll be mentioning it less. I'll just be saying, hey, if you guys want to support, here's a link to do it instead of having to mention all the different ways you can support us. And I'll be trying to put this up toward the end of the show, you know, so we're not bogging down the beginning of the show. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I hope you guys choke on your turkey. You Native American hating fools. I don't know why I have to personalize everything. I'm only one eighth Native American. I pretend like I'm like all upset about it, but I'm really not. I'm probably gonna have some good food tomorrow too. No turkey though. Are you having turkey tomorrow? Uh, any holiday that involves good food. I don't know if turkey's in my future, but good food will be in my future. Maybe a ham or something. I don't know. What, what do you What do you guys <laughs> eat on Thanksgiving? Huh? It varies. Yeah. I'm gonna have squash. Lots of I'm squash. I'm going to try to make the Alton Brown apple pie thing. That's a good idea. I might make an apple tart. I don't know if I have enough, I don't have, know if I have enough uh, flour to make a, a thing. So there you're joining us for Food Talk. Now, oh, by the way, if you guys want more food videos, there's a separate channel for that. And I'm going to make sure that it doesn't take any time out of our regular video schedule. But, you know, I have to cook. I cook a lot. And whenever I do cook, we're just going to handhold the camera and do very few cuts so that it only takes a few minutes to edit together. 
and then we'll put them up there. On the, but the video, the cooking videos are so easy because there's no research involved, really. I mean, there's some, but you just you just do it. You know, it's like, hey, let's do it. Grab the camera. We're gonna go make a cooking video. Do it live while I'm cooking. So well, it's gonna be on a different channel, so you guys can click on the screen and see that. The channel's called How to Live. It's not us showing you how to live. It's us figuring out how to live together with everybody else. Yeah, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> We're gonna do it anyway. Some sitcom producer is going to contact you now. Probably is. It's, it's a good name, right? Yeah. Anyway, subscribe over there if you want. If not, do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're subscribe. Ju- Share with your friends. We need to grow. Come on. Yeah. If you don't want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe because you're just the type of person that we don't need in the comments. Someone that doesn't <laughs> want to be here. There's apparently a lot of those around these days. Why did you go to the website, join, and say hello. Yeah, the way, if you guys really want to be taken seriously, go over to the website because that's where I look at the comments. They're, it's like the same exact video on the, on YouTube versus our website. Our website has some really interesting, um, you know, discourse going on. YouTube is basically like fart noises and flame wars. So, yeah, <laughs> it's sad, but that's just the way it is. Thanks, Google Plus. Good way to end. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Take care.